I'm actually out of breath from doing that thumbnail. <sighs> books are so heavy. Who needs the gym when you have books? So this month I did a thing. Actually, I did 25 things. And that was acquire 25 books. 12 of them I bought myself and the other 13 I was given by friends or sent them for review or in subscription boxes. First and foremost, I received two subscription boxes this month. There was the February and April Fairy Loot boxes. I did a double unboxing. So if you wanted to take a look at the two books that I received in those boxes, I will leave a link to that video down below so you can go check it out, see what I got and all the other fun goodies that were included in the Fairy Loot boxes as well. Continuing on with the books that I purchased myself this month, the first one is A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Mass. So I am actually currently in the middle of A Court of Thorns and Roses. I was hoping to do the Akatar read-along that was hosted by Bloomsbury, but the timing just didn't quite work out. So I haven't yet picked up Akamath just yet. I'm sure that most of you have heard of these books, but if you're not aware, the first book, A Court of Thorns and Roses, is a bit of a reimagining of the Beauty and the Beast. We follow Feyre, who is out in the forest hunting one day. She's trying to find food for her family. They're not very well off, half starving, and while she's out hunting, she comes across a wolf which she kills. And that wolf happened to be a fairy. Because of this, a beast comes along and pretty much drags her into the kingdom of the Fae for murdering one of his men. Next, I have Lyriel Aborson and Clariel by Garth Nix. These are the next books in the Old Kingdom series. The first book is Sabriel. I recently did a review of that book, so I'll leave that link down below if you're interested in my thoughts. But basically, I really, really enjoyed Sabriel. So I picked up these next books. So after the events of Sabriel, we skip forward in time a little bit where we have Lyriel and Aborson. We are following different main characters, but the characters that we do meet in Sabriel are also present in this one. And then Clariel is a prequel to Sabriel, I believe. So I'm not going to go into the synopsis of these ones, but in the first book, Sabriel, we follow a young girl named Sabriel who is living below the wall in Anselstier. When she hears news that her father has vanished and in order to go save him, she has to travel above the wall into the Old Kingdom where there is free magic and charter magic and the dead refuse to stay dead. Really enjoyed Sabriel. I'm actually almost finished with Lyriel and really enjoying it as well. So would definitely recommend this series. After finishing volumes 13, 14, and 15 of Full Metal Alchemist by Hiromu Arakawa, I picked up volumes 16 through 27. I'm pretty sure that volume 27 is the final volume of the series, so when I'm done with these, I'm finished. I don't want it to end. In this universe, we have alchemists who are able to kind of manipulate the elements. This here is the Full Metal Alchemist, so he has a metal arm and a metal leg. His brother is basically a walking suit of armor. These two are the Elric brothers, and their main mission is to kind of restore the younger brother's body because he is a suit of armor. It's a really fun, funny, and action-packed series. I'm really enjoying it so far. The next graphic novel that I picked up was Saga Volume 7 by Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples. I think this is the last one that's currently out. I've only read up to Volume 5, so with the Dewey's 24-hour readathon happening tomorrow, I will be reading Volumes 6 and 7. This is a space opera fantasy. The two main characters are of different species who are on opposing sides of a war, but they have fallen in love, so there is that element of forbidden love there, and they're basically on the run. Again, a lot of action in this one. I also picked up Who's Afraid by Maria Lewis. After Tommy Grayson's mother dies, she decides to go and track down her estranged father, so in doing so she leaves Scotland and travels to New Zealand, where she learns the truth of her heritage, which is essentially that she is a werewolf. It's been a long time since I've picked up a werewolf book, so I'm really excited to see how I like this one. I also picked up Ida by Alice Alison Evans. This follows Ida who has the ability to shift between parallel universes. So she has been jumping between different universes to escape disasters or to rectify bad decisions when one day she sees a doppelganger of herself and she begins to wonder if she actually has control of her ability or if there is something else 
coming into play. And I think we do have a lot of diversity in here, particularly with gender, in that I think almost every character is either transgender or there's gender fluidity. I also went to the book launch of Remind Me How This Ends by Gabrielle Toza. I don't actually know too much about this, but a lot of my friends have been absolutely raving about this book. We have two main characters, Layla and Milo, who when they were younger, they were really close. But after Layla's mother passed away, her father decided to pack their bags and move away. So I think that after that point, five years later, Layla shows up one day in Milo's parents' bookshop. I think it's about them re-meeting. These next three books my friend was unhauling, so I asked if I could take them off her hands. The first book is Maresi by Maria Turchininoff. Maresi goes to the Red Abbey when she is 13 years old, and this is an island inhabited solely by women. One day Jai comes along. She has fled to the island to escape these men who wish to hurt her and will stop at nothing to find her. The Way of Shadows by Brent Weeks. We follow Azoth, who has decided to take the risk of apprenticing himself to Dozo Blint, who is one of the most accomplished assassins in the city. In order to be accepted, he has to completely reject his old life and embrace a new name and identity. And with this new name, he becomes Kyla Stern. So if you watched my recent bookish buzzwords video, you'd know that one of my biggest buzzwords is assassins. So assassins. I also have The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender by Leslie Walton. All that I know about this book is that the main character, Ava Lavender, was born with the wings of a bird. And I think that she might go and uh, search for answers and learn more about her birthright, but that's pretty much all I really know about this one. Okay, I'm running out of time. I actually have to leave very soon for a doctor's appointment, so I'm going to kind of whiz through the last books that I have here. These are books that I received from publishers. I'll begin with the books that I got after going to a book launch event. I was basically given a bag of books by the publishers, so I'll start with those ones. First of all, this is the book that the book launch was for, and that is The Impossible Story of Olive in Love by Tonya Alexandra. Essentially, Olive has been plagued by a curse in which she is invisible to everybody but her one true love. And when she does meet someone who can actually see her, she's not sold on that true love thing. Mr. Wright feels more like Mr. Wrong. They also gave me this Fresh Reads of 2017. These are just some extracts from some of the other books that Harlequin Teen is publishing this year. They also gave me Vigilante by Katie Cross. The main character Hadley's best friend committed suicide after being raped the previous year. So I think that this is going to touch on some very sensitive topics. I think in response to all of this, Hadley decides to don a pink mask and seek revenge on all of her classmates that were kind of involved in the sexual assault, I think, that led to Magda taking her own life. We also have have Ginny Moon by Benjamin Ludwig. The synopsis of this one doesn't reveal too much about the story, but what I can gather is that the main character, Ginny, is autistic. Daughter of the Burning City by Amanda Foodie, and I think that this one has a traveling circus. So the main character, Serena, herself and her family make up the festival's freak show, and I think that there's a murder, so it seems like this one would have a bit of a murder mystery set in a carnival, which sounds pretty cool. I was also sent an unsolicited copy. We have Hollywood Days with Hayes by Hayes. When I first saw this, I thought it might have been a non-fiction, but I do believe it is actually a fiction book. But I think that Hayes became famous from Vine? I'm not 100% sure, but he basically was on a TV show and now he's come out with a book. The last two books I picked up from work, if you're not aware, I work for Bloomsbury. The first one I have here is The Bedlam Stacks by Natasha Pulley. Also, really, really like this cover. So cool! This seems to be set in the 1850s. There is a holy town named Bedlam in Peru and Merrick is on a mission to go to Bedlam. In this town, there is the only cure for malaria. The last book I have to talk about is Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race by Rennie Edo Lodge. Rennie is a journalist who made a blog post titled Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race, and this post went viral. There was a lot of people that wanted to speak up, so in response, she decided to dig a little deeper and to kind of look at the source of a lot of those feelings that arose. I think there is more of a focus on people of colour living in Britain, but this is the result. I'm really, really interested in taking a look at this one. I think some of the chapters look at white privilege, the fear of a black planet, feminism, race and class. I think that is everything. I think. I really hope so because I didn't think I could do with any more books. I've got to try and find a place to put these on my shelves that are recently reorganized. I did like a four hour long live show reorganizing my bookshelves, making them all nice, and now I have to rearrange them again. I guess I will wrap this up. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts on any of the books that I did mention, but I will see you tomorrow with a new video. Until next time, I'll talk to you in the comments. Bye!